again. I mean, it's the end of the year. So, uh, happy new year to you and your team at Napian Capital. Uh, hopefully, the next year will be better than this one. Wishing all of you the same. Thank you, Sonia. Thanks. Thanks a lot for joining in on the channel. But we were just talking about the auto sector and the fact that uh, it's been strong sales across the board. We have m and uh, that's joining us now. The company reported good sales in November in both auto and tractor segments. Auto sales were up 45% year on year, while tractor sales are up in double digits. The management says that tractor demand continued to remain strong in the post-festival period on account of a brisk sowing of the rubby crops. Uh, Rajesh Jajurikar, who's the um, executive director of the auto and the farm sector at Mahindra and Mahindra, joins us now. Uh, Rajesh, hi, good morning and thanks a lot for joining in. Good to see you in uh, on the channel. Uh, you know, in the UV segment, the utility vehicle segment, year on year, the growth is looking very strong. But on a month on month basis, there's a bit of a dip, a 6% dip, despite the very strong order backlog. Just trying to understand what is the order backlog now post the fest festive season and any specific reason for this month on month dip? Uh, Sonia, thanks for having me on the show and uh, it's a pleasure to be here as always. I just want to wish all of you on the channel, I believe it's uh, you're celebrating 23 years of yes. CNBC and that's an amazing run that you all have had. So compliments and congratulations to all of you on that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rajesh. And thank you for being a part uh, of uh, a large part of our journey as well over the last many years. Yeah, now to your specific question, yeah, we had a slight dip from October to November and that is uh, because semiconductors in some of our vehicles still continue to be a little short and we did have a shortage on a specific product uh, which has impacted us in the month of uh, November and we may have some of that in the month of December as well. But, you know, as we've said, uh, while we have an installed capacity of a certain level, uh, semiconductors may cause a plus minus 10 percent depending on uh, what is getting impacted you know in our newer products as we've said like xuv 700 we have more than 220 um, chips uh, that we need to be getting and any one of these not coming in could impact uh, output so and we've had a slight dip but we think uh, a volume of more than uh, 30,000 for the kind of price points we play in is a very significant volume and we've crossed 30,000 now three months in a row and continue to be number one in our SUV market share. So yes, a slight dip compared to in November compared to October, it's still a very, very strong run uh, doing more than 30,000 a month of SUVs. So there was a 39 to 40,000 production guidance by the end of FY23. Uh, do you stand by that and uh, are the supply side challenges uh, completely resolved now? Yeah, so like I said, you know, these are capacities that we are setting up for. Mm. There could be specific issues related to semiconductor or the availability of a specific part in any at any time through, uh, you know, the end of 2022 or even going to 2023. Mm. Uh, supply 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 uncertainty continues, as you know. You know, China is following uh, the easing it a little bit, but a zero COVID tolerance policy and that does lead to lockdowns, it does lead to disruption on some of the parts which especially the electronics uh, or the semiconductors. So we would expect to see disruptions along the way in 2023 but nothing like what we saw in 2021. All right, uh, Mr. Jajukur, hi, good morning, Prashant here. Uh, so, and this is true for the industry I'm assuming as well, hi, right? Prashant. Uh, so, uh, you know, last year you were on, you yes, said... Yes, it is. It is true for the industry, yeah. Uh, you said that you expect about a 5% year-on-year growth for the industry. Uh, is that, would you, would you stick with that? Uh, you're talking about tractors now, right, Prashant? Yes, tractors. Very clear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so we have said a little over 5% and we stay with that. The so November was better than what we had mm -hmm. expected and let's wait and watch how that goes. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually had a very robust uh, November sales in tractors uh, growing our domestic volume by 11%. Uh, we gained 2% market share and hence cumulative in the tractor side, we are actually a 0.9% market share gain, uh, which on our level of uh, volume is a very substantial gain. So we continue to do well with the very strong product offering on the Mahindra tractors and the Swaraj tractors both. Uh, the UO tech, which we had launched a few months back, is doing very well in helping us gain market share. Sorry, 0.9% gain market share in tractors uh, and, and, and over... 0.9. 0.9 yeah. Yes. Uh, over what, what, what period, sir? Yeah. 
That's April to November. Okay. That's this financial year YTD and 2% uh, share gain in the month of November itself. Hmm. Okay, that's on the tractor side. So you're saying you stick to your 5% plus guidance for FY23, yeah. right? In terms of growth for the industry. Okay, got that. Um, I wanted to come yeah, back... Yeah, we'd say a little above 5. Little so it above. could be in the range of 5 to 6. 5 to 6, yeah. okay. Uh, I wanted to come back to the SUV space because, uh, you know, these new uh, RD norms, which is the real drive emission norms, are kicking off very soon, I think from the month of April. Uh, I want to understand what is the price hike that will be you'll have to take for diesel SUVs and uh, what would that do to demand? I mean, do you think demand could get hit in any way? Uh, so, uh, we, we will make this transition through Jan, Jan and Feb. Uh, we are ready to make the transition and it will start happening in a phased manner as we get into January. Uh, the increase that we believe we have by way of cost for the change to the RD norms is much lesser than what many people are talking about. And we expect to be in the uh, cost range uh, in, the pri in the range of uh, maybe like 10 to 16, 17,000. Uh, depending on the models. Uh, we don't think that for the kind of price points we play in, this is going to be a very significant impact or will have any impact on the demand. Uh, there are people we are hearing talking about much higher in cost increases, but we think we have a good cost increase and uh, we should, we'll be able to pass this on. Okay, you'll be able to pass it on. Uh, the reason I ask is because, you know, it is quite a, uh, the run rate has been very strong across the board. The total auto sales that you've seen I think in the month of November has uh, crossed 58,300 and you spoke about how SUV sales were over 30,000. Is that a run rate that you can maintain over the next couple of months as well? We don't give a guidance, Sonia, but you know, you've seen the way we are setting up capacities and preparing ourselves for the future. Hmm. Uh, we believe that with the product portfolio that we have, we will see a very strong demand momentum. And uh, except for some very significant setback on the economic, macroeconomic front, uh, we expect the current demand momentum to continue. Mm. Good morning, Mr. Jajarika. Well, you're talking about your product offerings quite a few times, so let's get straight to that. In January, you're going to be launching the XUV400, I think. Could you tell us what is the capacity that you'll have as of now and any ballpark numbers, any targets that you'll have? Yeah, we will start bookings uh, towards the end of X, uh, for XUV 4 double, which is our electric offering uh, that we'll bring out. It'll be a first real electric uh, SUV offering and start bookings towards the end of January and uh, start delivery soon after that. Mm. Uh, we haven't yet declared or said what we're going to target. Let's wait and watch what kind of bookings we get. Mm. We'll be starting the set test drives uh, later in the month of December. Like we've said, we would like to get customer feedback as we get into the test drive, the initial feedback on the launch has been extremely strong yeah, by way of everything that we've heard digitally on social media as well as uh, through our dealer networks. Uh, but, uh, you know, we would, we would look forward to enabling a significant growth in the category there. As we've said earlier, the penetration of electric in the B segment SUVs mm -hmm. and the C segment SUVs is extremely low. Okay. Uh, in the region of 2 to 3 percent or in the C segment even lesser. Mm -hmm. So we, we would prepare ourselves for uh, enabling a growth in the electric penetration in the category. Yes. The XUV 400 is a very strong offering. It is a 4.2 meter product, so it gives a very good space and very good boot space as well. So uh, it also has a very good range, uh, excellent acceleration. So it's a very strong product offering. As we get closer to deciding on the pricing, uh, we'll work out on the volume. System. So we'll wait by for pricing and targets, uh, Mr. Jeju Ricard, but what is the capacity? Sure, sure. Uh, well, you know, the product has a lot of, uh, it will be made on the same line as the XUV 300. Okay. Uh, because it's, uh, you know, has carryover parts with 300. So from a manufacturing capacity, as we put out, uh, collectively between the, or combined between the 300 and 400, we'll be setting up for over 9,000 uh, capacity for both of these together. Uh, of course, one has to wait and watch what happens in the China supply chain, because that's, an important part of the uh, supply chain into and Korea mm. into uh, what what will go into uh, making of the electric 400. But from a manufacturing capacity point of view, it's fungible with 300 
and that's uh, <clears throat> over 9,000. Okay, you do know that Nigel is asking this from a personal uh, consumer standpoint, <laughs> right? <laughs> he's, well, he's very interested in <laughs> and he doesn't have to wait too no, long. No, actually I, I didn't know that Nigel. No. So I, I assure you Mr. Jajarikar, I'm going to be taking that test drive test but drive. I don't know whether it converts into a sale ultimately but I'll definitely give you my feedback personally. <laughs> and it's uh, in the, I mean you're not telling us the price Mr. Jajarikar? Yeah, and we'd love to get that Nigel but I can tell you if you test drive it you will book it. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the confidence. <laughs> <laughs> is it in that 17 lakh price band? I know you're not giving us the price, but am I on the right track? I, you know, um, Sonia, you're good at asking these uh, questions, which is fishing for information, but no, you'll have to just wait a little bit. No? <laughs> okay, all that's, right. That's a crucial factor for me, so I'll have to wait by. <laughs> <laughs> I think the fun part is the wait, right? Yeah. When the launch happens and then the test drive and then sort of the take it The difficult part is coming up with the money, Sonia. <laughs> Uh, but just a uh, couple of final questions then. Um, overall, in terms of you know demand trends, you spoke about how the demand is shaping up and the new launches. Um, any kind of uh, any kind of headwinds on the margin front because we have seen uh, the last time around as well. We spoke about this possibility of premiumization, how people are now upgrading to premium cars, and you did mention that there is a possibility of the margin profile for the company in the auto segment moving higher. Um, what's the expectation there? We have seen a significant improvement in our margin over the last uh, three, four quarters on the auto side. Uh, you know, it was in the region of 3.6% towards quarter three of the last uh, year. And it's moved up to over 6% right now. Uh, this has happened through operating leverage, cost reductions, uh, you know, some of the uh, products which were launched earlier, uh, getting out of the pre, uh, you know, the initial booking uh, price which we had held on to. Uh, so, you know, we have seen a significant improvement in our margin and uh, there is a lot of focus on driving costs down as we go forward. So, uh, let's say we've, we're so far delivering on what we had said would be the margin outlook for the business.